Well, before I go much further, I had a suggestion that I double check to make sure that the aluminum trim pieces fit properly along the back and along the front. So if I do have to make any corrections, I can do it before I get the paint on. So I thought that was a really good idea. I'm just going to cut the poly back right across here. I'll check that out, make whatever repairs I need to if necessary, and then I can go straight to masking this off and getting it ready to put the sealer coat on. Here's the back piece of trim, um, just uh, tap, put in place with a couple of screws, there's one here and there's one on the same side, same spot on the other side. And it does look like I'm going to have to do a bit of uh, massaging here as I'm, I'm quite a bit lower. So I'll probably just uh, try and jack that up, see if I can do it without having to do any body work, but uh, if that that's the case, uh, that's what we'll, I'll have to do. Thank you to the gentleman that suggested I double check that. It turned out to be a very good idea. And also, you can see on the, I'm going to have to do some uh, cleaning up on the trim. It's got some of the, uh, got some paint on it. And it just needs to be polished up a little bit. So I basically just pulled it down from the rafter and threw it on. And I have the one for the front, and I have the piece for both doors. Um, I've checked the front one, and it's, it's going to be all right. But this is the one that I'm going to have to get a bit creative with. So to push this spot up, to line up as it should with the trim, um, I've got a couple of pieces of plywood or OSB here uh, shimmed up to give me a relatively level spot. Uh, I've got a little block of wood. I'm just going to stick up underneath that. And then I'm just going to get a, a screw jack and jack that up a little bit at a time and just to see where we are. Hopefully I won't have to do any actual body work on this so I don't have to uh, go back a few steps. But if, if that's the case, uh, I'll just uh, cross that bridge when we get to it. So I'll dig out a jack and get the, to work on doing that. I'm going to switch the direction I'm putting this block in. There's actually a little reinforcing piece that goes across here, uh, and there's a gap between the, it, a vertical face on that and this lip that is just about that inch and a half of that uh, two by three. So I'll flip that around in there. Project this up. Well, it's definitely going up. So I've moved this a couple of different spots and it seems to be doing the trick quite nicely. And I'm pretty sure that mic won't pick this up, but as it's going up I can hear slight little uh, ticks so I know the metal is actually moving. with that now. And for my purposes, once I get that all screwed into place, that will be just fine. Holes are lining up as they should. Yeah, well there we go. Using this jack I was able to feel exactly where it was because of the screw and just making sure I'm pushing straight up. Well, there we go. One unexpected task done. The holes in the trim piece line up with the hole in the lip on the body and I'm very happy with how that's turned out. There is still a little bit of a dimple right about here. You can't see it in with the camera angle and, and what have you with the primer. Uh, but it's double thickness metal there so I'm not going to bother uh, trying to fix that. 
Uh, I'm not doing a concourse restoration. This is going to be a driver, uh, so I'm not overly worried about uh, uh, little things like that. So uh, quite happy with that. Now I'll pull that trim back off, and then I'll move on to getting the garage prepped for spraying. Well, I started wet sanding the bonnet, and I noticed in this area here, uh, there was a lot of uh, deep scratch marks. So I sanded it back with 180, then with 320, and I'm just going to put another coat of uh, high build on here. So there's a couple of spots where I've sanded down to the bare metal, so I'm just going to put a uh, another light coat or two of uh, primer on here, and then we'll get back to getting it prepped for paint. Pretty sure I've got the last little bit of uh, sanding and that have you done before I do the painting. Um, I'm going to replace all the masking on these holes here uh, before I go and do that. Uh, that way I can clean out the holes and leave them nice and fresh. Uh, the same with these ones up here. I've already taken the old stuff off. And at the front I've already put uh, new masking in behind and started to mask off the engine compartment. Just realized that's all the basking tape I have left, so I'm going to have to pick up some more in order to finish up. I will call it the night, and then we'll get back at it in the morning. So here, just have a quick look at the setup I've made for painting the doors. I just used some lumber I had lying around. I had an eight-foot-long shelf, three-quarter inch plywood. Cut that in half. Those are the verticals on both ends. I uh, used the 2x3s that I had used for the rotisserie uh, to go across and I drilled holes through the 2x3 and I'm just using rebar tie wire. It comes through here, down the hole, through here, along the inside of the door, back up through another hole and uh, just using the screw to wrap the wire around and it seems to be holding quite nicely. And I've rigged up something similar for the uh, license plate plinth as well. And that's going to help me with painting the doors. That wraps it up for this episode. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can do so uh, at the email address below. And my name is Ian. This is the Econobox Garage. We'll see you next time.